Welcome back to another episode of Dad's Garage. And today we're gonna be cleaning up the interior of the Suburban. The Suburban has been driving absolutely great. I've been driving it all week around after installing the transmission, which if you haven't done so, you, you can see the video with a few tips in there on just getting this one up and running again. I gave it a quick wash and a wipe down on the seats and everything. We still have a little bit of a musty odor in there and we're trying to get rid of that. Well, a couple of things I'll be featuring today is we're gonna be using an extractor to clean the carpets, get some of that musty smell out and some of the dirty grime in there. Besides that, we're also gonna be using an ozone machine, which I recently came across. Researching on this platform about sanitize the interior uh, and kill the odor, which I guess you know, this machine is, just does wonders for it. But you have to go through a couple of steps first. It's a beautiful day out in South Carolina and we have been waiting for this for a while. We've had rain for about a week, but now I am ready to take this on because I mean, the day's perfect for it to dry this out after we're done. But before we start, we've got our helper. Before we get started, I wanted to show you some of the tools that I'm gonna be using just to give you a heads up on anything. What GM decided to use on this car was on the front seats, for some reason, they have e-torque screws, a reverse torque, which is kind of like the female version of the Torx. And what I found out was the 15 socket, the 12 point actually works pretty well in getting them loose unless they're extremely rusty. These actually work very well. So besides that, we've got an 18 millimeter, I believe. Yeah, for this, these are for the rear seats. Small extension, I wanted the breaker bar just in case so they don't give me a hard time. Phillips flathead and just my uh, handy dandy drill. So besides that, what we're gonna do is, as you can see, the interior is pretty bad shape. I'm just, I'll give you guys more uh, footage of how the carpet looks and have a better idea once we have the seats out. But so far, I mean, I wiped down the entire dashboard, uh, all the uh, door panels and everything. They still have a little bit of staining but I didn't want to go too aggressive because all I wanted to do was drive the truck, make sure the transmission was 100%, and it is, thankfully, thanks to Nate for all his help. And so, let's get started. Break time. Ethan is asking for something. What are you asking for? I'm asking to for for my dad to have the supplies for for my controller I'm making. You gonna build a controller? Yep. Cool. Let's go. With you. He said I'm gonna give you some wires. Come on. And I need yep, a some wires are over there. And I even need a Top of them that can move. Will these wires work? Uh, yeah. Okay, here. You can have all these wires. And I need. So far, we vacuumed it really well. Make sure all of the stuff is gone. 
and besides that I sprayed this area right here I'm working by sections so this area I pre soaked it just to make sure everything gets through to all these heavy stains I'm gonna hit it with the uh, power brush or however you want to call this setup I'm gonna hit it with this you've seen this before in previous videos I just wanted to do it again and show you guys how much you can do uh, with the extra step of not only doing this but doing the extraction afterwards It has been a really long day. Uh, this is a lot more work than I originally intended, but I really wanted to deep dive into it a lot deeper because of the fact that last time I got into the Suburban, all I did was wipe everything down and vacuum it. And although that was a really good scrub down, there was a lot of detail still left. So as you saw before, I vacuumed. I pre-soaked some of the heavy stains. I hit it with the drill and the brush, kind of like that power brush is what I call it. And then afterwards I hit it with the extractor which did a magnificent job at really taking everything out of there that we kind of mushed into the rug because I re really wasn't picking it up with a, a rag behind it, kind of like what you normally would do if you didn't have an extractor. You're going to see the after now that I'm going to show you. It's just about dry. Uh, thankfully, I'm so grateful for today. It was a beautiful day out, perfect weather. It's about 50 degrees at its peak. It's starting to cool down right now, but it has been nice and breezy. So with the doors open, all doors, all four doors and the hatch, it, it's been really good to get this dry because I cannot emphasize enough that when you have mildew or mold, it, I mean, you're introducing more moisture to it right and if you don't dry it out what you just cleaned up you know it's just going to continue festering and that's the biggest part to this there goes that's why it's breezy today uh, so it's a good thing and bad thing it closes the doors sometimes but i'll just reopen them let the truck air out and one of the critical things also is wiping down your headliner I personally wouldn't spray it directly just because it's an old headliner. It's the original one from the truck and it's starting to peel in some corners which I'll touch up later with some adhesive. But it's looking good, it's smelling good, which is most important and I know that it's gonna be sanitized. Besides this, I'm gonna be running an ozone machine in the truck. And I'm just gonna run it the way it is tomorrow morning. I'm gonna run it with the AC and recirculation going while you know, I, I'm running the ozone so that it can get through all of the vents and really sanitize everything through the truck. I'm hoping this is a little bit helpful for you. It is so like inexpensive to do this as a one day kind of event. And the nice thing about the carpet cleaner is that you can always use it for your home. 